The next port of call for painting and travel is Grand Marais, Minnesota. Sarah talks with the director of the North House Folk School about the schooner Yordas. And Roger uses acrylics in his studio to paint the rocky entrance to the harbor. Welcome to Northern Minnesota. We're in the town of Grand Marais, and it's poised on the beautiful and enormous Lake Superior. You can see right behind me, there's a 50-foot sloop called the Yordas, and Roger is going to do a painting of it. Here in the studio, I've stretched an 18 by 24 inch canvas. This is linen canvas and I've toned the board with some burnt sienna and some olive green. So now I can get started painting. I'm using acrylics and on my palette I have titanium white, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, indian yellow, cadmium yellow light, alizarin crimson, cadmium red light. These are my primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. I have two blues, two yellows, and two reds. One of each of these colors is transparent and the other is an opaque color. So I have an opaque and transparent blue, an opaque and transparent yellow, and an opaque and transparent red. And then I have three earth colors, burnt sienna, burnt umber, yellow ochre, and then two greens. This is chromium oxide green and olive green. It's always important for me to know where my colors are on my palette so I don't have to be hunting for them. So I always put them around the edge, leaving palette space here in the middle. And I usually start with an order like this, but that can vary with your own preference. Just try to keep them in order. It does make painting a little bit easier. I think I'll start with my dark colors of these rocks. And here I have my reference photo right next to me here on my laptop. So I'm taking some uh, burnt umber and cerulean blue and making a dark color here. I have this sketched in fairly accurately. I've got a lot of lines here. I'm going to lose those as I, as I paint. But that really doesn't matter. It's not a bad idea to have some extra drawing to begin with rather than less. And by having as much drawing as I have on there, it sort of has given me a familiarity with the subject before I get started. I'm going to pick up a lot of different colors here. My warm colors, my cool colors. These rocks are very varied. So uh, they have a lot of different colors going on within them. I see some warm colors here, some warm oranges. I see some cool blues. So I'm just going to mix this up here, looking at my reference photo to give me a, a guide. I'm going to put these paints on here quite thin to start with. Pick up some red there. It's a lot of red in these rocks. This was called Artist Point, and it was just a beautiful place to paint. I was thinking about doing a larger painting of the schooner. I kind of like this scene, so we'll just have the schooner in the background. And later on in the program, Sarah's going to talk to us more about this schooner. Now, by having this tone underneath, this is a very helpful part of the painting because I'm putting this paint on rather thin and so already by putting this first layer of rock on here with the paint underneath I already have two layers of paint going for myself and it's already giving me some nice texture. Blue, red, that makes sort of a purple color. I'm losing most of my drawing here but I can see a few of my pencil lines underneath. A lot of rough brushwork because these rocks have a lot of texture in them and this rough brushwork will hopefully indicate some of that nice texture going on in those rocks. Now I have my atomizer with me and this is something that I can't do without when painting with acrylics. Keeps my paints wet, keeps my board wet just a little bit. 
but I'm going to do something here that I've done in the past. While this is still wet, I'm going to spray this with a few little drops of water. And I'm going to let those drops of water sit on that paint for a few moments. And while it's sitting there, I'm going to work on these mountains back here. And in the photograph, they're quite dark, but I don't want to make them very dark because they're in the distance. So I want to give them some atmosphere and push them in the background there. So I'll make them sort of a bluish color, add a touch of green. This is a brand new brush, so it has a nice chisel point on it. I'm just going to cut around the uh, schooner here. Those droplets of water I sprayed on there just a moment ago, I'm going to take my brush, be sure it's dry, and I'm going to drag my brush lightly over that area that I sprayed. And what I'm doing is I'm picking up those little drops of water which have absorbed this darker paint. And it leaves me with some rocky texture there. I'll move over to this side here, do the same thing. I'm going to lose a lot of this as I paint but this is giving me a nice foundation for these rocks. I can't let those drops of water stay on there for very long or else they'll dry and I won't get this effect. It takes a little practice to accomplish this because it's a matter of timing. Those drops of water can't stay on there for too long and you can't wipe them off too fast. You have to do it just about the, at the right time where those drops of water have absorbed that paint. A little experimentation and uh, it's fairly easy. Oh, cerulean blue and some white. Put this other mountain back in here. This is on Lake Superior. Well, you know, there's nothing like a new brush to work with. I hardly ever work with old brushes. Sometimes on some foliage or trees, that sort of thing, I'll pick up an old brush. But I always have new brushes with me. We have a very pale sky today, so I think some more cerulean blue and white, maybe a touch of yellow ochre to warm the sky. Often I can mix my paints right on my canvas here rather than mixing them down here on the palette. I have to be quick with the acrylics though because they'll dry within a matter of just a few minutes. I'll cut around these mountains. Now, I don't want those mountains to have a real hard edge there. So I'll put this paint on like this, blend out that sky some, and then I'll take my brush and just lightly drag through both these areas of the sky and the mountains. And I'll give that a soft edge. Now up here, these mountains are closer to me, so I don't need them to have as soft an edge because there's just not as much atmosphere between me and these as there is between me and these distant hills. So these can have a bit of a sharper edge to them. But compared to something in the foreground, they are quite a ways in the distance, so I don't want them to be terribly hard edged either. So I'll do the same here and I'll soften this edge, but not quite as much as this edge. And I think I'll put a hint of a few trees up here just with the edge of my brush. Right out here, we have a distant wall that uh, you can walk on as you go out to the lighthouse. I'll put that in there. I'm going to scrape off my palette, give myself a little more space. Now I'll begin to put in the water. I don't want to put in any details on any of this yet until I get the whole painting covered. Now down here towards the bottom, this is gonna be darker and bluer because as I look down into the water, what's being reflected is the sky, which is going to be darker up there than out towards the horizon. As I look out here, the reflection I'm getting is not from the top of the sky so much as it is from the area down here towards the horizon. So what's being reflected here in the water is the light from here. So this will be darker down here. I'm going to put some brown with that. I don't want to get that too awfully blue right now. And I'm using primarily horizontal strokes as I paint this. 
Now these rocks right here are very flat. They sort of go up at a very gentle slope. So I'm not getting much reflection of these rocks in the water. Now over here, these rocks sort of go straight up. So I will be getting some reflection of those rocks down in here. I want to be sure and use enough paint on this so it looks substantial. Now, like I said earlier, as I go up, this water gets lighter and lighter. Down here it's darker, up here it's lighter. Now when we get out into the harbor here, there's a lot more action going on in the water because of the wind and so on. Back in here it's very calm. So we are going to get more texture up in this area than down in here. But right now I'm just going to paint this fairly flat and just keep it simple. That's one of the key points I try and remember when I'm painting is to keep it simple, especially at the very beginning of the painting. Okay, now for the reflection of this rock. Now here I'm using vertical strokes. I'm starting out with vertical strokes, but after I get some of these vertical strokes in, like this, I'm going to go over it with some horizontal strokes. And of course this reflection won't have all the texture that these rocks will have. It sort of just gets lost in the water there. Okay, I'm pulling these down as these vertical strokes. Okay, I'll wash my brush out, wipe it off, and then I'm going to take and put pull some horizontal strokes right over this. I have to do this when it's still wet. So I think I'll block in this boat and this little patch of harbor we have back here. I am going to block in those sails and they're a burnt sienna color. I'm going to mix some cerulean blue with this burnt sienna. Putting that on there as straight burnt sienna is just too, too vivid, too bright. Now I have a number of close-up images of this schooner. I don't have to rely on this one distant photograph. I'll let that area dry and I'll have to go over it later on in the painting and refine it with more detail. Well, now it's time to add more detail in these rocks. I'm going to enlarge my reference photo so I can see into that a bit more and start with these very dark areas. This is really kind of a combination of some hard edges and soft edges, thin edges and thick edges. I have to be careful not to get this too busy. Keep some of these areas subtle because I want my main focus to be up here on the ship. So I want to kind of hold back on putting in too much detail down here in the foreground. I want some of it because it is an interesting area but I don't want to overdo it. So I'm trying to be careful and cautious here as to how much of this dark areas and how much of this texture I actually apply. Right here is where it just drops straight down into the water. I'm using a bright here and this is a new bright. So it's chisel, nice chisel point on it. So it holds a lot of paint. And I could do this with a thin pointed brush, but I would have to keep dipping in and picking up more paint all the time. This holds a lot of paint. I just use it on the edge and I can just keep going with it for quite some time without having to reload my brush. And I can get thin lines and thick lines with it. So it serves a dual purpose. Now I've pretty much lost my pencil lines here describing these rocks, but I just keep referencing my photograph and uh, trying to pick up on the feeling of where some of these go. They don't have to be totally accurate as to what the photograph is. They just have to feel right. Well, now that I have my darks in place, I'm going to begin by putting some of the lighter areas on the rocks. And I'm going to be using some warm colors. I'll spray that again so this paint flows over this easily. And with a light touch, drag some of these warm tones down into the face of these rocks. Now on the top part of these rocks is where the light is going to be really hitting it much harder than on the side. So I'll lighten that even more and we'll put some accents right here at the tops of these rocks. And right down here where these ledges sort of pop out and uh, light will be hitting that there as well. 
And here's this rock right in the foreground. Add a few light patches to the top of that one. Now I'll move over to the left side. We'll do the same thing. Just working on this a little bit at a time and I'm careful not to work on one area for very long without jumping to another area. Now these rocks here are much flatter so they're catching more of the light than the side of these rocks. And I'm scumbling this paint over these areas because I want this other paint and texture to keep showing through. There may be passages here where I'll use very opaque, but I want to get quite a bit of texture in here and, and then again not overdo it. Right down here in the foreground, this will be quite intense right here as far as the light. Some of these rocks sort of make a sawtooth shape here. This was a gorgeous place to visit, gorgeous place to paint. Now I don't think I'm going to do very much down in this area. It's sort of out of the field of visual focus and I don't think much attention needs to be done down here. Maybe just a little bit to finish this off, but I don't want a lot of detail to go in all these areas equally. Some areas will have more detail, some will have less. If everything has detail in it, then it sort of loses its punch, loses its effect. So to have one area that has a lot of detail, it will bring interest to that area and focus to that area, and that's what I want. And that will be more or less up in this area here. This area down here is more subservient, not quite as important. Now there are some small pools of water in amongst these rocks, and that's quite lovely. So I'll mix up some of this light blue again with cerulean blue and white. Add a few of these little pools of water. I think I'll add one or two more that weren't actually in the photograph. Well, I'm going to let this dry for a few moments, and I think this is a good time to go visit Sarah, where she's going to learn more about this schooner. This is Greg Wright. He's the director of the North House Folk School, and he's also a sailor. And the 50-foot schooner behind him is the Hyordas. What makes this a schooner? You know, a schooner is a sailboat with two masts or more, with the rear mast being as tall or taller than all the others. There's other details that are part of the sail plan, but that's the schooner Yordas has a taller back mast. She's also double gaff rigged, so the sails um, aren't a triangle. Instead, they're um, a four-sided sail, gorgeous maroon sails, green haul out on blue water. Uh, she's a joy to see out. And that color, how did that color come to be, the burgundy? The burgundy. You know, it's um, traditionally sails, um, so, some sails were white, but some are what were called tan bark. And so they were, they were actually, um, my understanding is, fabric that was tanned with a kind of bark stain. And so, in, in, you know, obviously in the world of modern nylon, it no longer is bark used in the, in the staining process. But we love that look. Um, because it makes our boat, the schooner Yordas, so distinctive. Mm -hmm. The looks are striking. <laughs> the story of the boat is the story of the school. We're a school that teaches traditional craft, you know, about the joy of working with your hands in the modern world of today, the joy of buy it now, et cetera, on your smartphone. There's something powerful and important about picking up a paintbrush, grabbing onto a block plane, uh, learning how to um, work steel in the blacksmith shop, and that's the story of the schooner Yorta. She belongs here, um, just like students belong here. Mm -hmm. That's a very hands-on appeal to, to be here and be able to get in there and uh, maybe try out your dream. You want to try out wood carving or broom making or um, any number of things. Yeah, we have. In, last year, we hosted 402 different classes, taught by 120 different artisans from around the nation. So. Greg, I've always wanted to come to Lake Superior, and it's a, such a daunting, huge lake. What's it like to, to sail on it? Well, the um, Lake Superior, especially this northern side of the lake, is actually relatively deep. Indeed, um, the lake is so large from a physical perspective. It's the largest lake by surface area in the world. And one of the ways to think of it is quite literally, if you filled up glasses of water, all the fresh water in the world, and put them on a table. And every tenth gra glass that you would grab 
would be from Lake Superior. 10% of the fresh water in the world lives in this lake. So what refills the lake mostly then? Rainwater? Yeah, absolutely. Rainwater and snowfall. And one of the critical things in the winter season is um, ice over because uh, when you get if you get ice across the surface of the lake, it decreases evaporation. And otherwise, winter, the winter season is one of the main times uh, when there's actually evaporation off the lake. Oh, so you have an even more water-filled lake if you've had a cold winter correct. because it's kind of sealed in? Absolutely correct. Hmm. So a beautiful lake, a stunning lake, and a fascinating lake if you think about how can a place, a lake like this exist, that much water here, so clean, so clear, so beautiful. Well, I'm so glad we made the drive up here. I've really enjoyed looking around and uh, tossing a few of those nice flat rocks, <laughs> trying to skip yeah. some. Absolutely. If you haven't tr tried to skip a rock in Lake Superior, you haven't lived, right? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> All right, well, thanks a lot. Great to have you guys here. I think this is a good time to work on some of the detail with the schooner and the lighthouse. I'm going over these sails once again with another coat. The first coat didn't cover very well, and often using acrylics, it does take more than one pass to get the paint to cover. I'll put some cerulean blue in here. Light from the sky will be blue, so it'll be bouncing off these sails, and of course, light from the water too will be a blue color. And with a very fine touch, here's the cabin. And I'll grab my ruler, mix up a warm color, and we'll put in these masts. Just using this ruler as a guide for my fingers, so my fingers will flow straight down here. I'm not sure I need it, but I think I will put a hint of that rigging on there. There's the bowsprit. Now generally things in the distance won't have any detail in them, but this is the center of interest, so it's kind of an exception. I want the focus to be on this schooner, so I am going to put in quite a bit of detail here. Now this isn't a terribly small brush, but it's a, a new brush, so it has a nice point on it, and I think I'm able to put some lines in there that look like a little bit of rigging, just with this rather large pointed brush. And with a few dark patches, maybe put a hint of a few people on board there. There. Now I'll move into the lighthouse. It's a white lighthouse, but I don't want to make that pure white right now. I'll keep that sort of a cool blue color, almost the color of the sky, because I want to reserve my very light colors, the whites, for some highlights. Put those legs in there of the lighthouse. That's the base of the lighthouse. And a few very fine lines that make an X pattern. Now here's the pure white. I'll lay that on there quite thick. That will give me my highlight. And I'll mix a dark color, sort of a rusty color, for the uh, top of the lantern room. Now I'm real careful putting this on because I don't want to go over into an area of the sky with any of these other colors because acrylics drying as fast as they do. If I make that top of that lantern room too large, then I would have to repaint part of that sky and it's very hard to match a color that's already on the canvas and dry. Now these rocks right here were sort of interfering with the schooner coming out into the lake, so I've shortened those some. And we also have an area right here on the other side of the harbor that has another light. So there's one light on each side of the harbor. One is a little bit more substantial than the other. And then we have a green stripe right in the middle of it. I'm putting some vertical lines down here where this seawall is. And just a warm highlight right on the tops of these rocks. And I'll vary the size and shape of that. We have a few posts out here. I'm not sure what they are, but might add a little bit more interest. And maybe a hint of a person or two right by the lighthouse. 
Now the water right out of here was a bit choppy, so I don't see any reflection from the sails in my photograph. But I'm going to add a few of them, and then I'll add a few more of these ripples out here in the harbor. Maybe just with a very small brush, put in a few of those sparkles. It kind of brings the eye up into that area. The painting is a lot about guiding the uh, viewer around the painting, giving him or her a tour, uh, sort of a, a map, just so, uh, just so the viewer doesn't get lost. You want the viewer to know where to go in a painting, and we do that with uh, composition, color, values, and detail. The sails on the schooner are coming forward too much, so I'm going to take cerulean blue. That will cut the brightness of those sails and give us a little more atmosphere. I'm going to add a few more reflections right here underneath these rocks. I'll mix a warm color. Then with a vertical stroke, I'll just drag this paint right down over this dark area. And I'll take some dark color and bring some of the dark down into the water as well. And with a fine touch, I'll just drag a few small horizontal lines over that area. Well, I think that will finish this piece. We'll leave you with a few more scenes of the schooner and of this location called Artist Point there in Grand Marais, Minnesota. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.